Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 56 in our incredible new tutorial series where you are unleashing the power of your Raspberry Pi Pico W. What I will need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at SunFounder. SunFounder is actually sponsoring this most excellent series of video lessons. And in this class, we will be using the Kepler kit for Raspberry Pi Pico W. Now, most of you guys probably already have your gear, but you guys that don't take a look down in the description, there is a link over to Amazon. You can hop on over there and pick your kit up. And believe me, your life and my life are going to be a whole lot easier if we are working on identical hardware. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to show you today. I'm going to show you how to use a joystick with your Raspberry Pi Pico W. Now, a joystick is a very useful input device to give user input to the Pico W and we're going to learn how to do that today. Sound cool? I hope it does. So let's jump over here and let me get out of your way and I will have a little sip of coffee and let's switch to the overhead view and let's see how to get this thing hooked up. Okay, so this is the joystick. You'll find the joystick in your kit and then what I did is there is like a strip of connectors, a strip of wires that are female on one end and male on the other. And so I just carefully peeled off together four of those and I kind of got the brown, red, orange, yellow. And I kind of like that because brown is going to be my ground. Red is going to be my power and then orange and yellow are going to be my control signals. And how do I have this hooked up? Well, if you hold it like this and move this out of the way, you can see that that first pin is ground. I, be, I bring ground to physical pin 38. So this is like physical pin 40, 39, and 38. And then the next pin that is labeled, the next pin that is labeled 5 volts, we don't want to hook that to 5 volts because the analog to digital converter is reading 3.3 volt. It's a 3.3 volt read. And so we need to connect this to 3.3 volts. But never fear, you can get the 3.3 volts from physical pin 36. So this is skip one and then physical pin 36. You got 40, 39, 38, 37. 36. Now we've got power and ground to the uh, to the joystick. We are halfway there. If we look at the next pin, the next pin is labeled VRX. And let me check to make sure. Yes, the next pin is VRX. And then we have VRX hooked to physical pin 27. VRX is hooked to physical pin 27. And then the next one is VRY. The next one is VRY. And we have that hooked up to, I said physical pin, I mean GPIO pin 27. And then GPIO pin 26 on the Y. So X is GPIO pin 27. And Y is GPIO pin 26. And so that should get that thing all set up and hooked up and ready for us to start programming. So again, take a little sip of coffee. We will fire up Thonny. And as we're firing up Thonny, I think that is the one that we want. Let's just give it just a second to get everything connected here. Let's get everything connected as we should. And now we should be ready to start programming. I'm going to make sure that my Thonny is connected to the Pico W. And yes, it is. That's good. So now we are going to want to use the GPIO pin. So we need to import machine like that. We're going to need to uh, put some delays in there. So we're going to import time. We are going to do a little math probably. So we're going to import math or at least eventually we'll probably doing some uh, doing some math. So we're going to import that. And then uh, let's see, what do we need to do now? We don't need to do any more importing. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create, uh, we're going to go ahead and we are going to create our, uh, our, our joystick objects. And so I'm going to have X 
joy and X joy is for the X axis of the joystick and that is going to be machine dot a D A D C for analog to digital converter. And I think I'll be a good boy and I think I'll go ahead and say X pin here is going to be X pin is going to be 27 we said and then Y pin is going to be equal to 26, I believe we said. And now what we do is we do xjoy is machine.adc, and then that is going to be the X pin like that. And then Y joy <clears throat> is going to be machine.adc, and that's going to be the Y pin. And so now we should be set up ready to read those things. We should be set up and ready to read them. It's pretty easy at this point. We're going to say while true, create a loop when is true, true, true is always true. We just created an infinite loop. And now we're going to come in and I'm going to actually read my X val. And I read my X val from where? I read my X val from my X joy. Okay. And I'll do a dot read, and then it's going to be an unsigned 16-bit int like that. And then open and close for good measure. And I think that's going to give me my X val. Then Y val is going to be equal to Y joy dot read underscore unsigned 16-bit int. Open and close. And now let's go ahead and print those. So I'm going to print X val and I'm going to print y val and we're not really exactly sure what to expect here we're really not exactly sure what to expect and the reason we're not exactly sure what to expect is because we're not sure how these things are oriented and what it considers zero and all that sort of stuff and what range it's reading so we're just going to print it and then we're going to see what we are dealing with and now we should probably put a time dot sleep and I'm going to put in let's put a quarter second 0.25 just for good measure all right and I think I want to move this over I want to move this over so you can see the things here as they print by and then I've got the plotter turned on if you don't know how to turn the plotter on where is that you come run you come view shell and you come down and say you want to view the plotter and that'll show you the plotter and it'll show you the numbers that you are printing out okay and let's see maybe I should come over here and kind of show you <clears throat> what's going on here as well let's see I'm trying to get where you can see everything that I'm seeing okay I think that will be pretty good so now I will need everyone to hold their breath and boom look at that we're getting readings and we're not getting errors okay now what are we reading we are reading something like 33,000 on the X and something like 32 33,000 on the Y and then even without things moving without moving the joystick you see that the readings are varying a little bit that's just noise in the data okay that is just noise in the data but now what I want to see is I am the way I am going to do this I am going to hold the cables pointing towards the right and now when I go up and down I hope that that's Y and Y is orange okay Y is orange and so yes that goes all the way up to something like 65,535 and then when I come down it goes almost to zero okay it goes almost to zero 65 uh, 535 and then also now I'm going to go left and right that'll be blue and so the blue goes to 65 535 and then it goes almost down to it goes almost down to zero okay so the good news is y is y and the good news is x is x and so I like that and the things are operating almost kind of like you would expect but not exactly so first of all what is this number that we are getting this number that we are getting 65535 65000 65535 well what is 2 to the 16th if you take 2 
and raise it to the 16, you get 65,536. 65,536. But if you start counting at zero, you would go from zero to 65,000. 535 if you have 16 bits. And what were we reading? We were reading an unsigned, an unsigned 16-bit number. And so that sort of works. That sort of makes sense. It is sort of what we would expect. Okay, so that's good. Now, what would we expect? We would expect when we went down on that Y value, we would really like to see zero, but we are getting something like 250, 260. OK, but you see down goes down and up goes up. Now, a little thing that I don't like very much is I don't like that when I go left, it gives me a positive X. And when I go right, it gives me a negative X. And so it's sort of like in some strange way, this thing is not following the right hand rule. It's not giving me an X, Y coordinate like I would expect. And so when we go in and start messing with this, I want to correct that where basically I think let's go ahead and correct it right now. And so you see that X is kind of going, uh, that X is kind of going the wrong way. And I think the way that I would fix that is I would say that the X value, I'm just going to take 33,000 or 30, what is it? 30, what was that number that I did so well just a second ago? That number Oh, it's up here. Okay, 65,535. So it's going to be 65,535 minus the reading. And I'm hoping that that will make things go the right way now. So let's take a look now. Okay, so they're both in the middle. And when I go to the right, X goes up. Okay, that's good. And when I go to the left, X goes down to zero. That looks good. Up. It goes up to 65, uh, 535 down. It goes almost to zero. And so you see now this thing is behaving where positive X gets bigger as you go positive and positive Y gets bigger when you go positive. So the things are kind of oriented more mathematically. Now, why did I want to do that? Okay, one thing that I didn't like was the directions were not intuitive. We have fixed that. What is the other thing that I don't like? If I want to go in and start controlling something, 65,000 uh, 535 is not a very intuitive number and 224, 250 being the, the kind of like all the way down position, that's not very intuitive and having it in the middle be 30. 3,424, that's not very intuitive. So you can see that it's moving exactly right. If you look back behind me, you see that it is it is moving and behaving very well and very smooth and very controlled. And so if we just look at the graph, we really like what we're seeing looking at the graph. But what we don't know is these numbers are just too arbitrary to be very intuitive to work for this thing. And so what does that lead us to? That leads us to your homework for next week. And what your homework is, I want you to go in and I want you to calibrate this thing. OK, I want you to calibrate this thing and let's see if I can get this where you can see it. I want to get it where you can see it. Give me a second here to do Windows Management. OK, and now let me stop this. And so this is, you know what, I'm going to have to make that a little bit smaller here. That. OK. There. Now I think you can see everything. You can see the numbers, you can see the graph, and you can see what I'm doing with my hand. So as I'm working with a joystick, what I want is I want the center position to be zero, zero. And then when I come this way, I want to go from zero to positive 100. And you could think of it kind of intuitively as this is the zero, this is the zero position. This is 100% to the right, and then this is minus 100, meaning 100% to the left, and then this is positive 100 up, and this is minus 100 down. So 0, 0 in the middle, positive 100, minus 100, 
positive 100 minus 100. Now I've got something that's very intuitive to work with. So I want to go ahead and I want to put that together and I want to make that work. And then as we move forward incorporating this joystick into projects, it's giving us numbers that we don't really have to think about. We don't have to worry about that 250 on the bottom side and we don't have to worry about what 65,535 means and we don't have to worry about why we're at the neutral position at some 30, 30 something thousand. Okay, so this is what your homework assignment is. I want you to write a program that will work with the joystick and it will behave as such. It will behave as such if I can see that. Okay, yeah, now look. What happens when we are sitting in the neutral position? We are reading 0, 0. Now you saw there was one reading there because I kind of touched it and I generated a little bit of a, a little bit of noise. But now what we are going to do, don't worry because that's a very small signal, but okay, if I go to the left, what happens? The X goes to minus 100 and then I'm going to be coming up slowly and I come back to 0. And then as I continue to go to the right, where do I go to? I go to plus 99, which if I did this more perfect, it would be plus 100. But that is 1%, so that's pretty good. If I go down, the orange goes to minus 100. And then if I go up, the orange goes to plus 100. And then I can go upper right, right? I can go upper right. And I've got at upper right, I've got 100 and 100. If I go lower left, I've got minus 100, minus 100. Then I could do the cross ones, which is plus 100, minus 100. And then this is minus 100, plus 100. Okay. And then I can kind of go anywhere around in there. And this thing is behaving very intuitively. Return to home base and we're sitting there at zero, zero. That is your homework assignment. And then you get this thing calibrated. You get yours calibrated. And then what we're going to do is we're going to play around with this and start kind of putting it into some simple and fun projects. And then you'll know how to master this joystick. You'll know how to master this joystick so that when you want user control of something within your project, you'll know how to do it. Okay, guys, I hope you're having as much fun taking these lessons as I am making them. As always, I want to give a shout out and a big thank you to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. You are the guys that are keeping me in the game. You guys that are helping on Patreon, you're the ones that making it possible for me to week after week release good content. I want to thank you for that. You guys can also help me out by giving me a thumbs up. Helps me if you leave a comment down below. You need to subscribe to the channel. When you do, make sure you ring that bell so that you get notified when future lessons come out. And most importantly, share this video with other people because the world needs more people doing coding and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter with topdeckboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.